In the last two decades, the contribution of solar energy to the world's total energy supply has grown significantly. This video will show how solar cell or photovoltaic cell produce electricity. Energy from the sun is the most abundant and absolutely freely available energy on planet Earth. In order to utilize this energy, we need help from the second most abundant element on Earth, sand. The sand has to be converted to 99.999% pure silicon crystals to use in solar cells. When we analyze the structure of the silicon atoms, you can see they are bonded together. When you are bonded with someone, you lose your freedom. Similarly, the electrons in the silicon structure also have no freedom of movement. To make the study easier, let's consider a 2D structure of the silicon crystals. Assume that phosphorus atoms with five valence electrons are injected into it. Here, one electron is free to move. In this structure, when the electrons get sufficient energy, they will move freely. Let's try to make a highly simplified solar cell only using this type of material. Similar to N-type doping, if you inject boron with three valence electrons into pure silicon, there will be one hole for each atom. This is called P-type doping. If these two kinds of doped materials join together, some electrons from the N side will migrate to the P region and fill the holes available there. This way, a depletion region is formed, where there are no free electrons and holes. Due to the electron migration, the N side boundary becomes slightly positively charged, and the P side becomes negatively charged. An electric field will definitely be formed between these charges. This electric field produces the necessary driving force. Let's see it in detail. When the light strikes the PN junction, something very interesting happens. Light strikes the N region of the PV cell and it penetrates and reaches up to the depletion region. This photon energy is sufficient to generate electron hole pairs in the depletion region. The electric field in the depletion region drives the electrons and holes out of the depletion region. Here we observe that the concentration of electrons in the N region and holes in the P region becomes so high that a potential difference will develop between them. As soon as we connect any load between these regions, electrons will start flowing through the load. The electrons will recombine with the holes in the P region after completing their path. In this way, a solar cell continuously gives direct current. In a practical solar cell, you can see that the top N layer is very thin and heavily doped, whereas the P layer is thick and lightly doped. This is to increase the performance of the cell. Just observe the depletion region formation here. You should note that the thickness of the depletion region is much higher here compared to the previous case. This means that, due to the light striking, the electron hole pairs are generated in a wider area compared to the previous case. This results in more current generation by the PV cell. The other advantage is that due to the thin top layer, more light energy can reach the depletion region. Please support Learn Engineering's educational activities on Patreon.com. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.